Hello there, my name's Joe and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I thought we'd take a look at the Comfy UI LCM LoRa, which is a latent consistency model that we can use to um, speed up generating images in Comfy UI. So what I think we'll do is we'll take a look at what is this LCM? Where can we find it? How can we download it? And how can we bring it into our Comfy UI? workflow. I'll then do a demo with the LCM LoRa and then later I'll do a comparison using the same prompts to generate image without it. And we can look in the difference in quality we get um, between images with and without an LCM LoRa. Okay, so um, let's give that a go. So the LCM LoRa, its correct name is the LCM LoRa Weights Stable Diffusion Acceleration Module. And um, basically what this will do, this will greatly speed up how long it takes to generate images. It will work with Stable Diffusion XL, and also it will work with Stable Diffusion 1.5. Well, I believe there are separate LoRa's available for that too, but we'll look at that in a moment when we uh, take a look at where we find this, this LoRa. Usually LoRa's, which are what, uh, low ranking adaptations, they normally make uh, an enhancement or an adjustment to a, a small part of your images that you generate, whether it be adding additional colors or trying to repair hands or eyes or whatever. Usually LoRa's do a small function, but do it better than what the main model will. This one is, is really quite different. This is an accelerator. However, it is loaded the same way that other LoRa's, uh, LoRa's are. So uh, let's now take a look at where we can find this LoRa. Now, as the LCM LoRa is a LoRa, the, the place to find it will be in civitai.com or civitai.com, whichever way you pronounce it. Just a couple of things about this website, just in case you haven't um, used it before. To use it, you do need to register an email address, but that's all you need to do. Um, once you've done that and gone to the homepage, which we're on at the moment, well worth coming across to this icon here where you see the eye, and that's where you'll set your filters. So if you left click in there, you can control what it is you see. Mine are just set to PG now, just so that we don't see any mature or immature content, whichever way you look at it. So, yep, so your filters are there. So be aware of that. Now to find your models, LoRa's, etc. The way I do it is we're on, at the moment, we're on the home tab for the Civit AI uh, website. I come across to models, click on models, and then once I've done that, I come across and click on filters. Now, today we are looking for LoRa's. So what I would do is, let's get rid of that there. I would highlight LoRa, and then I would highlight which um, models I'm interested in looking at. So really for me, it would be Excel 1.0 or maybe even 1.5, and then these uh, the web page updates itself on the fly. So there's nothing else to do. So if I just click out that now, so we've, we're now in the LoRa's and you can do further searching in that to find whatever it is you're looking for. And, and the same thing, if, uh, if I just go back there to the filters, if you were looking for the main checkpoint models, you'd click in here. If you're looking for embeddings, you click in here. And if you're looking for hyper networks, which again is one of the oldest types of models that were used, um, you would click on this and you can mix and match this to your heart's content. However, so let's now, so this is how we get to the LoRa's. We want to go to um, the LCM LoRa, which I've already opened up here. So let's go straight to this LoRa now. I'll, again, I'll put the um, URL for this page into my comments. So we're on the correct page now for um, LCM LoRa weights. And a couple of things to note here is when you come to this page, um, always have a quick read of the notes here. There's usually, or hopefully there's good information about how many steps to use, what CFG is suggested, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's always worthwhile clicking on the show more button and just having a quick nose through that. And we can see already that um, it's recommending that we set the CFG to up to 1.5 and steps up to three. So a bit of information there, useful to us. Back to the top here. If we have a look here at the moment, 
we are highlighted on the latest version. So this is would be logically the version that you would want to download, but you can, as I mentioned earlier, I think, um, if you wanted the LCM for Stable Diffusion 1.5, you could click on that and then download from that page. Okay, so moving across to the right side now, here we have the download button, which is where we will download the LoRa if we want it. And that, if you're using a Windows computer, that will drop the um, file into your downloads folder. A bit further down, quick look down here, see if there are any, quite often LoRa's may have trigger words. We can see here there are no trigger words listed. And a quick look down here, I didn't see anything, any reference to any trigger words. So we don't need to worry about that. It confirms here the base model that was used to generate this, this LoRa, which is SDXL, which is fine. So we're, we're going to be using an SDXL type model. And that's about it. A bit further down here, we have the author's name here as well. And we can click into there and, and look at other things that they've done too. So that's about it. So to download, you will click um, the download button and it will go down to your um, downloads folder. Let's just quickly look at mine because I think I may still have mine there. Uh, let's go downloads. Okay, so here we have this PyTorch Laura Waits, which is the file. I would then cut and paste that into Comfy UI. So um, I would do cut and paste to save file space on my computer, come across to Comfy UI, and then select models, select Laura's, and paste in the file there. Now you can. If you want, you could rename your files. You'll, you'll notice here that I pretty much all my um, LoRa's are renamed. I, my naming convention that I use is just LoRa underscore, and then the main name of the LoRa followed by underscore, followed by, is it SDXL, is it 1.5 or a version number, something like that. So you can see basically um, how I've done that. So that's where you drop your files to. Once you've dropped a new LoRa into your Comfy UI. You don't need to restart Comfy UI, but you do need to refresh it. So let's just quickly show you, remind you to do that. All you need to do once you've put the LoRa into the correct folder, just click on refresh. And now you're, uh, you should be able to locate that within your workflow. If you can't, you may need to, re to do a restart, but in most cases you can. So we're back to our workflow now. Now, if we want to add a LoRa to a basic workflow, what we have here pretty much on the, in the blue icons here is just a standard text image workflow. You can see here that I've added a couple of load LoRa's, but if you're not new, if you're new to this and you haven't done this before, all, all I do to load the load LoRa node is I left double click, get the search box, and I'll just type in Laura. And then you can see you get the load Laura. And then I will add that up. So let's just run through how we would do this. So the load Laura node sits in terms of connection, sits between the load checkpoint and your text prompts. So it's kind of really it's going to sit up around about there. And then all you need to do is from your load checkpoint outputs you'll take the model output to the model input you'll take the clip output into the clip input and then for the outputs from the load laura you'll take the model and take that across to the model on your case sampler and your clips you'll copy uh, sorry not copy you'll take into both your positive and your negative prompts. And that's all you need to do. So you're just really putting that in between. If you're adding, let's move this down out of the way for a second. If you're adding more than one LoRa, and as you can see we have here, all you're doing is carrying on the same connection. So we have this first LoRa here. I've taken the output model and put it into the input on the next LoRa. 
and same with the clip output into the clip input and then again the output will be into the the model to the model in the case sampler and the clips into the text prompts so that's all there is to it nothing much there at all so let's get rid of that model now and let's just have a quick look now at the LoRa so if you haven't used it before load LoRa if you click on the first drop down there you will see all the LoRa's that you have installed in your comfy UI LoRa folder so you select the LCM SDXL LoRa I've renamed that file to LoRa LCM SDXL you can leave it at the LCM weights or whatever it's originally called if you want to you don't have to I just do it because that's my naming convention and then you've got two more boxes where you can adjust the strengths and you have the strength model which to my mind is probably the more important one and the strength clip I tend to keep these two in tandem so if I reduce the strength of model I reduce the um, equally reduce the strength of clip there's I don't think there's an awful lot in it so I'm not going to really spend any time on that but um, for this demo we're going to leave the strength on uh, model and clip as at one okay so let's now take a quick look at the workflows that we're going to use here so as I mentioned a moment ago we've got this text to image workflow in blue I've added two LoRa's one is the LoRa that we need to um, use this LCM so that's that's what the main part of this demo is about I've then added a second LoRa just so we can see and prove that we can we can use other LoRa's as well I have seen some stuff um, spouting that LoRa's don't work if you're using the LCM but um, so we'll we'll give that a go and, and see if that works we've got a basic prompt here I'll just call it up you can pause the screen if you want to read that if that's of interest to you and I'll probably put this in the comments as well but basically it's a, a detailed portrait um, blah 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 let's go to that okay I've made some personal notes here just for my own memory because I have I'm, I have a memory of a sieve our empty latent I've done 1024 by 768 um, we're using the dream shape Excel model so 1024 by 768 is fine I'll put a copy this dream shape model is is a lovely Excel model I'll um, put a link in my description to this as well if you haven't got this already I would recommend it um, yep yeah, so come on to K sampler now here we need to follow the guidelines that we saw in the um, description for the Laura weights i.e in terms of CFG and steps so following the advice in that document um, I have changed the or I'm setting the steps to four and the CFG to one so they're both very low the sampler name is LCM the scheduler is SGM underscore uniform and I'm leaving denoise at one I have set a fixed seed with a seed number of one two three four five and that's just purely to um, I've done that to help me when I was practicing this so I I get some consistency in what I'm saying um, but it doesn't need to be fixed you you can do random whatever you want okay and then of course we have a decode um, which takes the latent and turns it back into our um, what's the word pixels for our final image and that's it on on the first one so let's first of all let's um, disable this second LoRa we don't need that just yet so I'm going to bypass on that so everything else is going to run I'm going to disable this second workflow down here and I'll look at that in just a moment so we're going to set group nodes to never on that one so this is the only thing that's generating and basically um, oh, I should have mentioned I've set the batch size to four so we're going to generate four images um, using the 
uh, LCM Laura, and we'll see how long it takes um, to generate that. And we'll get a time um, clock that will come up on here, which is really very helpful. And um, I just quickly mentioned that on my computer, I've moaned about this before, my GPU is AMD, so my computer is slower than most for, for some things. Um, so, well, only using Comfy UI, really. I don't know, I've got a fairly good computer. Um, so usually generating four images could, could take me uh, a couple of minutes or so. So let's see how long this takes to generate four images using LoRa LCM. Let's cue the prompt. Okay, so we've got our four images. We can see here, if we look over here on our Comfy UI menu, that took one minute and 15 seconds to generate four images. And that's bearing in mind that it's the first time it's done this. And so if I was to run this again, if, if I was on a random seed or whatever, I'm sure that would knock down the, the time even more because there's always an extra delay on the first run through. So one minute 15 for four images on my computer is very good. On yours, particularly if you're using NVIDIA GPU, probably even faster. So let's try now. Uh, let's have a quick look at the um, images in, we'll go in via Windows Explorer. And here we are, let's, let's have a quick look at that. Let's bring that up. So this is the quality that we're getting using this accelerator. It's not super, but the images themselves are not three bad. I think I prefer this one the best in terms of um, composition. Uh, the, um, these other images are very sort of like passport facing straight to the front, not my cup of tea so much. But you get an idea of the, the quality of the image that you'll get using LCM LoRa. So let's close that down for the moment. Minimize this. And we're just out of interest. I'm going to add an extra Laura. Now I'm just going to use one of the colorful painting ones that I've used before. And just to see what difference that makes A to the timing to generate four more images and see how much effect on the quality, if any. So I'm going to activate the LoRa by selecting Bypass. So this LoRa is now live. I'm using the LoRa Dry Paint Peel, which I think I've used at least once on a previous video of mine. Now to use the LoRa, I do need to add a trigger word. So I need to find my, trig my trigger word for LoRa Dry Paint Peel. And that, because I use this workflow manager thing up here, which I've spoken about many times, which is great. But one of the great things I can um, use this for, if I click on the models button, go to my LoRa's, and now if I can find my dry paint peel, where it is, and here it is here, if I select on that, that's gonna take me straight to the Civit AI page. And I can see here now from that, that the um, trigger word I need is this. So I can left click on that, Come back to my prompt. So let me just click there to get rid of that now. And now I always put my trigger words on the next line, just so that they stand out to me. And let's try now running this um, workflow again. Uh, but now this time with an additional LoRa and see what comparison we got. So we've got one minute 15 with with no no working law attached other than the ELCM. And, and let's just see what we get just out of interest. So uh, let's cue prompt. Okay, so we've now got our four images generated again now with the additional dry paint peel colors Laura added to it. And this time around, it only took 58 seconds 
to generate the images, which was doing actually more work because we've introduced a, a whole new LoRa. So that's not so bad. Now let's take a quick look at those images in Windows Explorer. Okay, so certainly the LoRa has worked. And I do think there is, I don't know why, but there is actually an increase in the um, quality of the images, not just with, with the color. So yeah, so very nice. So that's the quality of the, this is a very basic test, but it's the quality of the images I've got just introducing one extra LoRa in addition to our LCM LoRa. So let's now just for the, the finish off on, just for the sake of comparison, let's just run really the same prompt through on again on Dream Shaper, but without the LCM. So it's going to take longer. But really what I wanted to show you really is the difference that we're going to see in quality of the image, I think really. So let's, I'm going to disable this first group. I don't want that running again. Um, and on this one, let's enable this. I need, first of all, I'm going to do what we did for the group up here. I'm going to disable this Laura to begin with. And let's bypass that. Just check my text. We haven't got the trigger word on there, which is what we want. And um, everything else is pretty much the same, except for when we look at the settings on the case sampler, because these are the settings that I would use regularly with this checkpoint. So obviously the um, settings that we used for the LCM were the LCM recommended settings. I'm now just using Dream Shaper. So I'm just going to use the regular Dream Shaper regulator settings. So again, I've stick, I've stuck with the fixed seed of one, two, three, four, five. Um, this time now I'm changing my steps to six, CFG to two. My sampler, I've gone back to good old DPM PP 2M SDE with uh, Karas and the denoise is on one. And again, it's a 10, 24 by 768 image, and we're going to generate four images. And um, that's about it. And then, so obviously, this hasn't got the LCM, so this will take a fair bit longer, particularly as I've got AMD GPU. So, anyway, let's just give this a go. Q prompt. Okay, so we've now got our four images just on the Dream Shaper uh, workflow. You can see here that that took uh, one minute and 40 seconds to generate four um, 1024 by 768 images on my computer. It'll be completely different for anybody else if they were doing the same test. Okay, so let's just quick, quick look in Windows Explorer and look at the quality of those four images. And I think you can easily see that the much higher quality. Very nice. Okay, so let's close that down. So a definite um, difference between the quality of the images um by using without the lcm than with but let's now just to finish off let's just add the same laura to this image just so we match what we achieved in the um the first workflow so i'm going to right click on that and select bypass that brings us back online we've already got selected the the dry paint peel laura set to one i need to add the trigger word, which is the thing I normally always forget to do. So I'm feeling very pleased with myself that I remembered that. Control C there. Let's just bring that down onto there. Um, have I made any other mistakes? Everything else is the same. 
so this is still switched off so we're now just going to finish off now and add the um, dry paint peel Laura to our images so Q prompt okay so we've now got our four images with the dry paint peel uh, Laura added let's take a quick look at those in Windows Explorer and I think there's a substantial difference between the quality there and what we've seen previously wow okay so there you go let's just close that down close this down for a moment and that took one minute 37 seconds on my computer to generate the four 1024 by 768 images with a Laura thrown in as well which isn't, isn't too bad on its own to be honest um, I've certainly waited a lot longer for some other things however yeah so that I think is the comparison that I wanted to show you between the two let's just bring this one back online um, just so we can see the quality there and if I select one of these there we go so they're not exactly the same image but they're pretty damn close and you can see even just with this uh, low resolution quality here that you can see the difference that we've got so um yeah that's about that i think so to wrap this up i think this lcm laura is a great tool particularly for prompt building if you are designing a prompt and you want to have a quick look at seeing what the output is going to look like and then um using the lcm get some quick results then amending your prompt try again try again and then when you've got something that you really like then maybe transferring that to your model without the lcm or alternatively what you can even do if you've got a result from using the lcm that you like you could always save that and bring that into your workflow into an image to image workflow and then start building and improving on that image too so there's another way of doing it um, but for me i think i would use this to prompt build look at my results when i find i've got a prompt that's to my liking then perhaps take out the lcm laura as as we've done here on the second demo below and work from that so that's what i would do but that's probably not everybody's cup of tea but i think that's about as much as i know and have found about this um, lcm i think it's a very very useful tool i would say that i've i haven't used ip adapter i haven't used animated images um, so i've no idea how this would work with either of those so please don't ask me because i don't know but other than that i hope you found this useful thank you very much for your time and uh, have a good day and goodbye